Hello everyone, once again this is G, and this is a follow up video on the Deodorizer Madness. Today I'll show you just what can happen when you start to scale up some of these setups and get way too carried away. Now a lot of these optimizations are based on suggestions by you guys, and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for posting in the comments, and keep it up. And we'll see what we can come up with together as a community. And for those who haven't seen the previous video on the Deodorizers, make sure to check it out in the link below. Okay. Now let's have a look at the setup and then I'll show you a couple more and you can decide for yourself if I've gone too far or not. Here we have a setup with passive off gassing down here. There's no bottling and there are no dupes required for this to operate. Let me pull up an overlay. Okay, here we go. So starting from the bottom in yellow, here we have the polluted water and polluted oxygen at low pressure. In orange, we have polluted oxygen at high pressure and in red, we have clean oxygen at low pressure and there's a water layer membrane here. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And in pink here, we have oxygen at high pressure. Let's have a look at the polluted water. Here we have 37 tiles in total at about 10 tons per tile. So that's a total of 370 tons. And this is gonna take you about 62 days to fill this up if you have a full pipe of polluted water coming in for 62 days straight. And we're using this bead of naphtha here to prevent this pipe and this vent from going over pressure. So it just keeps filling up and there's a little switch here to turn this on and off. Once this is full, you only need to top this up at about two kilos per second. And then it will emit enough polluted oxygen to make this whole process worthwhile. Now, in order to make sure that this polluted water doesn't break out because of the extreme pressure, you have to wall it in with either airflow tiles or solid doors, which are not subject to pressure. And that's what we have here. Above, we have airflow tiles. This lets the polluted oxygen out. And then at the bottom, we have solid doors except over here, because Natha, there's only 10 kilos of it and it doesn't cause any issue with pressure. Also, I've added a layer of wall here all the way around. And that's just to make sure nobody accidentally opens any doors and floods your base, because that would be bad. Above the polluted water, we have the polluted oxygen here, which is off gassing and is being immediately removed by this whole assembly of gas bypass pumps. And the gas doesn't even have a chance to accumulate, frankly is being immediately taken away into this high pressure chamber over here, which is also where the valves are for those pumps. These bypass pumps, they also act as check valves. And so any gas that makes its way up here can't possibly make its way back down. And so you are able to create a very high pressure area here and almost no pressure down here. Now the space over here, it also acts as a buffer for polluted oxygen. And I found that it's important because it helps to equalize the pressure of the gas that's coming from below. And that is because the off-gassing from the tiles of polluted water, it doesn't happen evenly, like with the bottles. Instead, it kind of happens randomly. And so you can have patches of high pressure just popping up here and there. And having a nice buffer here helps to equalize and even out the pressure. And this way, oxygen is fed, polluted oxygen is fed nice and even into the deodorizers. And you don't have any vacuum spots. Because if you have vacuum spots up here, you're going to have a problem of clean oxygen making its way down, and we don't want that. Also, it's very important to maintain high pressure in this polluted oxygen chamber at all times, ideally above 20 kilos or more. Here it's almost 300 kilos per tile. And the reason being is if you have low pressure down here, then what can happen is as deodorizers are taking up the polluted oxygen, they're creating a vacuum spot potentially if there's not enough uh, polluted oxygen. And the vacuum spot can then immediately be backfilled by clean oxygen on its way back out of the deodorizer. And that way you'll have clean oxygen making its way down here into this polluted oxygen chamber. And again, we don't want that. So before you put any sand here in the deodorizers, you have to first get high pressure of polluted oxygen in here. And then you can start feeding sand and get the deodorizers up and running. Above that, we have uh, alternation of solid and airflow tiles. And we only want to have airflow tiles directly below the deodorizers and then spaced out by a solid tile. And then deodorizers themselves are spaced out. And above that, we have a layer of water. This is a water membrane. And this water membrane, it's only like 10 kilos per tile, but it kind of moves around. It shuffles left and right as clean oxygen is emitted. And this spacing out and the layer of water is very important in order to keep the clean oxygen from going down and polluted oxygen from coming back up. If you have too many deodorizers stacked up next to each other, 
then if two of them are adjacent and they emit oxygen at the same time, what can happen is polluted oxygen can trade places with clean oxygen and then you have a mess on your hands. So we don't want that. So spacing it out like this keeps any of these uh, issues from happening. There's no mixing. We have high pressure of polluted oxygen down here, which keeps any kind of vacuum from occurring down here. And then we have low pressure of clean oxygen up here, which prevents it from pushing its way down at any point. One other thing is this layer of water above here. It's being separated into multiple compartments and they're about nine tiles wide each. And this is because if you don't have it separate and you have one large layer of water, what's going to happen is it's going to slosh around sideways and then actually it's going to start accumulating on one side and getting really low on the other side. And to prevent this, you just compartmentalize it like this. And honestly, it's like a similar concept to use in oil tankers. You just compartmentalize, keeps it from sloshing sideways. Okay, then we have our loaders and our conveyor belts and sweepers. And this is to bring in the sand and take away the clay. And above this, we have our oxygen compressors, one for each side. And oxygen is being pushed in there using the bypass pump here, set at two kilos. So if there's over two kilos of oxygen down here, then it will activate and bring in the oxygen. Same thing over here on this side. And this is because we're going to keep the oxygen pressure down here low because we don't want it to exceed the pressure of the polluted oxygen below that. Otherwise, there's a chance of this clean oxygen making its way down. So we remove this clean oxygen and bring it in here. Finally, at the very top here, we have our oxygen release system. And these gas pumps here are not necessary to feed the base, just to feed the atmosuits. But to feed the base, we have this setup over here. Now, I'm still working to tweak the door release setup. So if you have some thoughts, please post in the comments below. But the main gist of this setup is like this. We have two sensors here. This is essentially the rest of your base. It checks to see if it's below one and a half kilos. And this one is inside the bypass pump. And it checks to see if the pressure is below one kilo. And currently it's not. And if it is, and the pressure outside is also below 1500, then the door will open and let some oxygen into this chamber, at which point this is going to be above one kilo and we'll set to false. Once this is false, but this is still true, meaning the pressure inside your base is too low, but in this chamber is now high enough, this bypass will open the vent and take this oxygen into the rest of your base. This is set up like this because we don't want any CO2 making its way in, and this bypass pump, it works also as a check valve, and it prevents any gases like CO2, chlorine, or oxygen from making its way back into the system here and the door won't prevent that. It might still allow CO2 or some liquid to leak inside, and we don't want that. But the, uh, the bypass pump by itself without the door is gonna let way too much oxygen out, but the door is going to help to cap that. In fact, you could probably use several doors. I still gotta test that, but I just put one door here for the sake of simplicity. So the door here is to cap the amount of oxygen going out, and the bypass pump is to prevent any other gases from getting back in, and together, it kind of works. So let's see it in action. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sandbox out the oxygen. It's vacuum in here now. This is set to true. And it's releasing oxygen to this room and it's closing. If there's not enough in here, the door will open. So let's try this again. So again, vacuum, true. This guy opens up and this is dropping now. So it's gonna set to true, door opens. Fills in this chamber, closes. This will activate again and top up. And now it's at a high pressure. And in order to even out this pressure a little bit more, we're probably gonna need a few more doors. Gonna have to look into that. Post what you think in the comments below. And the automation for this is pretty simple. We have an end gate here for the door and an end gate for the bypass pump vent with a knot to invert the output of this particular atmosphere sensor. Same thing on this side. Okay, so overall, this plant produces about 1.8 kilos of oxygen every second. And you also get 2.9 kilos of clay every second. But you have to feed it about 2 kilos of polluted water every second. Actually, I have it set to 2,002 grams here. Why the 2 extra grams? That's because of these bypass pumps. And you also need to feed it quite a bit of sand, 2.7 kilos of sand or regolith every second. And if you want to know how to produce a lot of sand... You first need to make a lot of igneous rock and check out the video in the link below there on how to make a piped magma plant or regolith melter and you can get a lot of sand out of either of those. 
from Igneous Rock. So how does this stack up against an electrolyzer? Well, a couple of things here. First, it's very low power. You can see here, even though the maximum is at 1200 watts, what actually happens, you use about 300 watts on average. And you can use a battery to buffer this out. And over here, we have, this is just to feed these pumps and these doors which run very occasionally. And so this is essentially zero. And in terms of heat, there's very little heat being produced here. It's just coming off of these loaders and sweepers, which don't run all the time either. So it's very energy efficient and heat efficient, but you do need a lot of sand. So if you have a geyser producing a lot of polluted water, that's great. And then you just need a source of sand. That's where you're going to need some dupes to crush it. But otherwise, it's a very energy efficient setup and you get a pretty efficient conversion of water into oxygen. And you also get a lot of clay as a byproduct, so you can make lots and lots of ceramic. You get about 1.7 tons of clay every cycle, so that's quite a bit. And the other thing is, if you need polluted water, and let's say you don't have a geyser of that, but you have lots of clean water, you can just use CO2 scrubbers to make yourself as much polluted water as you need, provided you have lots of CO2. So you have CO2 heavy sources, so you're going to have lots of polluted water, and then you can just feed it into this machine. And then you can produce lots of oxygen out of that. Okay, so this is pretty much it for this machine. But let me show you a couple of more crazy ones. Okay, here we go. So up here, we have basically same thing going on in terms of this water membrane. And we're separating clean oxygen from polluted oxygen. But there's a very simplified way to release oxygen into the rest of the base that I did here. Here we have 30 deodorizers going on. And you get about 2.7 kilos of oxygen every second coming out. But the difference is this one is dupe operated here. And we've got bottle emptiers instead of um, reed plants. And then we also got lights added as per suggestions. And this helps to improve dupe speed. And also I had to add quite a bit more bead pumps in here to help to move the gas out of these bottles and away. Down here, we've got the dupe quarters, standard issue, nice and comfortable. And let me show you the automation here real quick. Okay, let's have a look here. So here, essentially, we have two buses of automation. And at the end of each bus, we have a buffer. And we have a buffer on this one. Same thing on this end. Now, these vertical buffers here are set to two seconds each. And then the horizontal buffers are set at 0 0.1. Essentially, I, I would set them to zero if I could, but I can't. And they're just used to control the direction of the signal, kind of like diodes. You can use an OR gate here. I just put a buffer instead. It does the same job when you have two buffers. And what ends up happening is when a dupe is detected by motion sensors, either on this side or on this side, then the door that is in front of the dupes, let me show you here. Here we have the door, motion sensors. When a dupe goes to this door, motion sensors will detect them, trips this door, and it will also trip the door behind them over here. But this door will trip for two seconds while the rear door will trip for only 0.1 seconds or whatever the standard amount of time. And this prevents thrashing. Otherwise, if we don't have this timer set up, then the dupe can run back and forth with the bottle and well, that will be a problem. Won't so instead we set up these timers and that makes the dupe drop the bottle consistently and then go to the opposite side. And this works very consistently. Now, the advantage of this particular setup is that you actually get 50% more oxygen than the other setup because here we have 30 deodorizers versus 20. And you only need about 75 tons of polluted water to start in the bottled form because it off-gasses much better when it's in bottles versus in tiles. So it's more efficient in terms of the startup cost and also scales better. But again, this requires a dupe. The other setup doesn't. Okay, last but not least, I want to show you the craziest of them all. This is the vertical version that I've been working on. And it's so big that it doesn't even fit into the frame properly, so I had to zoom out a little bit just to show you. But it works on the same principle as the others. You have these water membranes here and on this side, and you have the deodorizer sitting inside of those. And you have polluted oxygen columns on the left and on the right, and it's being fed in by these bead pumps that are dropping beads down on these naphtha uh, beads here, and polluted oxygen is coming from down here. 
this particular setup that's being operated by Otto over here, you can see there he is for scale. It's uh, producing a lot of polluted oxygen and it's feeding 32 deodorizers and all. So in the end, you get 2.9 kilos per second of clean oxygen coming out. That's almost three full pipes. And the bottom section is the same as I just showed you. Let me zoom in. One thing I threw in here is this little chlorinator over here. And it's just a bunch of liquid reservoirs submerged in chlorine. And let me show you the plumbing real quick here. You can see that we have polluted water coming out of the toilets and it's just looping around and there's a little bridge here. And it feeds back into the system until this tank here is full. So all five tanks need to be full before the shutoff opens and feeds the polluted water back into here. And it's to help recycle the toilet water. This works really well and it's a very, very simple setup. You don't need any timers or anything like this. You just have five full reservoirs and once they're all full of non-germy polluted water, once all the germs died, then you can go ahead and start using this and then it will just simply, you know, recirculate if it gets too low and then it will open up if it gets full. This works really well. But anyway, that's on the side and I feel this video is getting way too long here. So let me just wrap this up by showing you a size comparison real quick. There is Otto down there. He's one with the machine. This has been Greasy Hammer, and if you found this interesting, then smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.